Section 1. What are stem cells and what is regenerative medicine? First, what are stem cells? Stem cells are unique cells with two key properties. They can self-renew, make more of themselves, and they can differentiate or become specialized cells. For example, a stem cell might become a bone cell, a nerve cell, or a heart muscle cell. There are several types, embryonic stem cells, induced pluripotent stem cells, and adult stem cells, such as mesenchymal stem cells, derived from bone marrow, adipose stem cells from fat tissue, or stem cells taken from the umbilical cord. Next, what is regenerative medicine? Regeneration is the field of medicine that aims to promote organ repair and regeneration, thus obviating the need for replacement. In practice, this means using stem cells to repair tissues that have been damaged by disease, injury or aging, rather than replacing the whole organ with a donor or artificial substitute. Here's a simplified breakdown of how it works. Process 1. A source of stem cells is harvested, for example from your bone marrow or fat. Process 2. Stem cells are then processed and expanded in a specified laboratory. Process 3. They are delivered into or near the damaged tissue. They may differentiate into needed cells, secrete growth regenerative factors, or modulate the immune and inflammatory environment to promote healing. It's not magic. There are still many challenges with safety, control of differentiation, and ethical regulatory issues. But even with the caveats, the potential is enormous. Section 2. How many conditions and which ones? We'll break this section into subsegments for clarity. Section 2A. Blood and immune system disorders. The earliest and most well-established application of stem cell therapy is hematopoietic stem cell transplantation, HSCT. This is essentially a bone marrow stem cell transplant. This has been used for decades to treat blood cancers like leukemia and lymphomas, immune disorders, and other bone marrow failure conditions. It is the most reliable stem cell therapy because the stem cells involved, hematopoietic stem cells, are well understood, and the mechanism, replacing a damaged bone marrow compartment, is relatively direct. Thus, this area is the gold standard of stem cell therapy and regenerative medicine. Section 2B, Orthopedics and Musculoskeletal Stem Cell Therapy. Next, the field of orthopedics, joints, cartilage, bone, and tendon. Several studies show that mesenchymal stem cells are being used to treat osteoarthritis, cartilage defects, and non-healing fractures. Biomed Central performed a controlled trial of umbilical cord-derived MSCs for knee osteoarthritis which showed superior results compared to hyaluronic acid. Although the evidence is still emerging and not yet standard of care everywhere, patients are already reporting improved mobility, reduced pain, and delaying or avoiding joint replacement. The mechanism, MSCs likely do more than just turn into cartilage. They secrete growth factors, modulate inflammation, and recruit other repair cells, which is called the paracrine effect. Regenerative medicine is becoming very active in orthopedics, especially with injuries in the elderly. Section 2C, cardiac, liver, lung, kidney, and neurological therapy. The ambitions of stem cell therapy go further into regenerative medicine into organs such as the heart, liver, lung, kidney, and nervous system. Here are some examples. Example one, the heart. Studies use stem cells or derived patches to attempt regeneration after myocardial infarction or a heart attack. However, it is not yet a standard treatment for heart disease. Research shows potential benefits such as reducing scar tissue, stimulating the growth of new blood vessels, and improving heart function. But more research is needed to determine the optimal methods and long-term safety and efficacy. Example 2. Liver and Kidney. Stem cell surgery is not yet a standard treatment for liver and kidney diseases but it is being actively researched and is in the early stages of clinical trials. Studies have shown that certain stem cells can help regenerate liver tissue and improve liver function in animal models. Early clinical trials have also shown potential benefits for patients with conditions like decompensated liver cirrhosis. There are no FDA-approved stem cell treatments for kidney disease yet. The effectiveness and safety of these therapies still require more rigorous investigation in clinical trials. Patients interested in potential stem cell therapies for liver or kidney diseases should look into ongoing clinical trials, which can be found on websites like clinicaltrials.gov. Example 3. Neurology. For spinal cord injury, 
neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's, and ALS. The promise is large, though the evidence remains very preliminary. Research is focused on using stem cells to replace damaged cells, repair neural tissue, and regenerate the nervous system for conditions like multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, stroke, and ALS. There are thousands of clinical trials globally in stem cell and regenerative medicine in the neurological field. However, many of these are early stage, experimental, and not yet fully standardized treatments. Again, patients interested in potential stem cell therapies for neurological disorders should look into ongoing clinical trials, which can be found on websites like clinicaltrials.gov or the Harvard Stem Cell Institute HSCI website, which offers information on current research and what to consider before joining a trial. Section 2D, Wound Healing, Skin, and Chronic Pain. Significant research is being done on using stem cell therapy for skin and wound healing, with active areas including clinical trials for burns and experimental approaches like 3D bioprinting of skin. Studies are exploring the potential of various stem cells, such as those from bone marrow or adipose tissue, to accelerate healing, reduce inflammation, promote blood vessel formation, and regenerate tissue in different types of wounds. For example, a 2024 systematic review looked at randomized controlled trials using regenerative medicine for skin disorders, including alopecia, vitiligo, and scar repair. Significant research is being conducted on stem cell therapy for chronic pain, with promising results for conditions like complex regional pain syndrome, or CRPS, and musculoskeletal pain. This research is exploring how stem cells can potentially repair tissues and modulate the pain response offering a new alternative to traditional treatments like opioids. Clinical trials and studies are showing positive outcomes in reducing pain and improving function. So whether it's joints, organs, skin or nerves, regenerative medicine is exploring a broad frontier. Section 3. How good is the science? Okay, we've talked about what the field might do. Let's be honest. How strong is science today? Here are some key points. Point number one. Many peer-reviewed reviews confirm that stem cell therapy has excellent potential in regenerative medicine. Point number two. The clinical translation, however, meaning high-quality large-scale trials, demonstrating consistent positive outcomes, is still limited. For example, a review stated, Stem cell therapies have demonstrated therapeutic efficacy and benefit in preclinical models, but results in clinical studies have not been impressive. Point number three. A 2022 review of registered clinical studies noted that while there has been progress, there remain many unknowns. Optimal cell type, dosage, delivery method, timing and manufacturing quality. Point number four. The 2022 Frontiers Review emphasizes that although preclinical work shows benefit in multiple organs, further studies with larger patient cohorts are needed to establish definitive efficacy in humans. In other words, yes, the promise is real, but the practice is still evolving. The science on stem cell therapy is a mix of promising research and caution, with a consensus that its potential is not yet fully realized. While blood stem cell transplants are a proven and effective treatment for certain cancers and genetic disorders like sickle cell disease, most other stem cell therapies lack robust clinical evidence. For many common conditions like knee osteoarthritis, some treatments may offer pain relief through a complex mixture of cells and signaling molecules that reduce inflammation rather than true tissue regeneration. An important caveat, not all clinics or therapies are equally validated. There have been concerns about unproven stem cell treatments being marketed without sufficient evidence. So the take home, if you're exploring regenerative therapy, ask whether it's part of a regulated trial, what evidence supports it, and what the risks are. We'll cover those and more questions at the end. Section 4. Real Patient Testimonials Science aside, let's hear from real people. Here are some real-world patient stories. Always remember, individual results vary. Testimonial number one, published in Ray J Orthopedics, Rich M, age 55, stated, My expectation is to avoid knee replacement surgery, because Dr. Gobezia performed stem cell injection in my knee to rebuild the cartilage. After five months, the pain is greatly reduced and sporadic. Testimonial number two, Cindy, age 57, stated, The pain in both of my knees was so bad. I began to shuffle everywhere. I had the procedure and my increased mobility is huge. I can now stand for long periods without pain. Testimonial number three. Thrive MD published a quote from Susan, from Colorado, who stated about her knee stem cell injection. 
after only three weeks, I have an 80% reduction in my knee pain. Testimonial number four from a qualitative study of patients undergoing stem cell therapy for knee osteoarthritis. Edward A. posted a testimonial from Mark Wellness in North Carolina, who had a torn meniscus in his knee, pain, stiffness, and trouble walking upstairs. Edward writes, After several years of constant pain in my knee, I was told by an orthopedic surgeon that I needed a partial knee replacement. And one year later after my stem cell treatment, I am in full swing, it's important to say, these are anecdotal and while powerful, don't guarantee results. Section 5. Risks, Challenges, Ethical and Regulatory Issues With so much promise, it's easy to imagine this as a miracle cure. But for full transparency, there are risks and major challenges. Challenges and risks include Risk number 1. Controlling stem cell behavior and the possibility of unwanted differentiation or tumor formation if cells aren't properly guided. Risk number two, manufacturing and delivery issues. How to ensure cells are viable, safe, adequately dosed, and given at the right time and place. Risk number three, patient selection is key. Not every condition or every patient will benefit. For some patients, stem cell injections can be of great benefit for others. Results will be disappointing and ineffective. Regulatory issue number one, Many clinics market stem cell therapies that are not FDA approved or are offered outside rigorous clinical trials. Legal precedent matters. The Ninth Circuit decision, 2024, reaffirmed FDA's authority to regulate certain stem cell products as drugs. Regulatory issue number two. The dynamic between federal regulation versus state laws. Some states may try to enact laws that loosen regulation of stem cell therapies, raising potential conflicts or regulatory gaps. For example, many recent articles note state laws allowing unapproved stem cell treatments in certain contexts. An important takeaway. Do your homework. Ask about the evidence. Ask if you're part of a clinical trial or approved treatment. Understand the cost, the alternatives, and the risks. Section number six. What's next? The future of regenerative medicine using traditional medicine. Number one. Precision and regenerative medicine, tailoring the stem cell type, dose, and delivery to the individual patient. Number two, whole organ engineering. Scientists are exploring ways to grow or print whole tissues and organs using stem cells and scaffolds, which are temporary porous structures that act as a 3D framework to support cell growth, attachment, and organization. They are used to deliver stem cells to a specific site, mimicking the body's natural extracellular matrix to guide tissue regeneration. Number three, more extensive clinical trials. As the field matures, we expect more rigorous large-scale studies and, hopefully, more therapies to move into standard care. Section number seven, how AI can make dramatic breakthroughs in stem cell and regenerative therapy. The role of artificial intelligence, AI, in the future of stem cell therapy and regenerative medicine is huge. It's not just incremental, it has the potential to accelerate, scale, personalize, and improve the safety of therapies. Below is a detailed breakdown of how AI is being used now, and what we can expect going forward, including opportunities and key challenges. Number 1. Fully automated cell manufacturing pipelines. AI with robotics and real-time feedback loops could take patient cells through transformation into the desired cell tissue delivery with minimal manual intervention. This would dramatically reduce cost, time, and improve consistency. Number two, real-time monitoring and adaptive treatments. After cell therapy delivery, AI systems might monitor imaging, biomarkers, cell tracking data, and adapt subsequent treatments in an adaptive fashion. Number three, personalized regenerative therapies at scale. Integrating AI with genomics, imaging, and health records means truly personalized regenerative medicine. Instead of one-size-fits-all stem cell therapy, we'll see stem cell therapy optimized for your biology, your disease state, and your needs. Number four, novel therapy discovery. Using AI to explore cell types, scaffolds, bioelectric signals, and gene modifications to discover new regenerative strategies we humans alone might not find easily. Number five, Improved safety and regulation via AI. AI tools can help detect anomalies, ensure traceability in manufacturing, optimize processes for consistency, and assist regulatory compliance by analyzing huge data sets for safety signals. If you're considering stem cell therapy, here are three action steps to take. Action step one, ask. 
Is this therapy approved or part of a legitimate clinical trial, and what evidence supports it? Action Step 2. Understand cost, risks, and alternatives. Don't assume stem cell therapy equals a miracle. Action Step 3. Choose a provider you trust, who is transparent about what is known and what is experimental. Action Step 4. Ask the provider if the stem cell and regenerative therapy they are proposing has FDA approval. Now let's do a complete wrap-up of what we covered. Number 1. Stem cell therapy and regenerative medicine are about harnessing the body's own repair mechanisms, or engineering them to heal damage, regenerate tissues, and restore function. Number 2. Stem cell therapy is being used or explored for many conditions, including blood and immune systems, joints, bones, organs, including heart, liver, kidney, skin, burns and wounds, and neurological injury, with real-world patient stories showing impressive improvements. Number 3. The science, while promising, is still evolving. Not all therapies are proven. Risks remain. Patient selection and provider quality matter. Number 4. The future of stem cell and regenerative therapy is very bright. From personalized cell therapies to engineered organs, we're at the cusp of a new era in medicine. If you found this video from Health Equals Wellness helpful, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss our upcoming deep dives into specific regenerative therapies. Thanks for watching. Stay curious, stay informed, and take care of your body like the masterpiece it is. This video is for informational purposes only. For medical advice, always consult your doctor. Thank you.